Hello, can everyone hear me? I think the sound may have been malfunctioning uh, and now it should be operating correctly. Yes, I could hear you. Wonderful, thank you, Stephen. Um, so for those of you who are new here, we are looking at uh, playbooks, how companies can utilize open chain ISO 5230. And the idea of the playbooks is to make sure that that utilization is as simple and as quick as possible. The context is that last year we made a medium company playbook. This playbook contained a simple structure. Uh, the core of the structure was that it described type of company, a medium company in this case, uh, the challenge and the situation and the type of people involved in implementing a good open source compliance program. In the medium company, a senior engineer, a legal expert and a management representative. Now we're working on variants of this for small companies and for large companies. Um, I just noticed our chat is disabled. I am enabling it now. And uh, as well as the chat, um, please be aware that you can also uh, unmute yourself. So the chat is now open, so you can use that freely. So the large company and small company playbooks are something we've been working on a little bit for a while. Uh, a few things have been done. Stephen, who's on the line, has contributed to both. One thing that's notable, I think, is that in the small company playbook, rather than having engineering, legal, and management involved, the small company uh, has two people, engineering and management involved. Uh, Stephen, was that your edit? And I just wanted to double check your rationale for that. Uh, no, it wasn't. That was in the original version that uh, was posted. So I, I left it as it was, but it seemed reasonable and that uh, a smaller company would be less likely to have its own in-house legal staff, more likely uh, using external resources, that kind of thing. Oh, I concur. I thought it was a, it, it made a lot of sense. Um, and I suppose <laughs> the question would be, when do we tell them to go, go talk to someone else? <laughs> go talk to legal. Um, so w when you had a look at these documents, um, what type of things were you changing? What type of things do you think fit for medium company, but what needed to alter? Well, the, the draft that was posted the, the were basically two versions of the medium company, but with large chunks of it cut out. So all the, the challenges were removed. The, 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 what we, the what we have description was cut down. The, the steps were just blank. So I filled in those and didn't change too much of the text that was already there, roughly following the same path as the medium company thing. And there are a few cases where I should have just cut and pasted the uh, the text directly from the medium one, but I was going off the top of my head. I, I was doing this while traveling, so I was offline at the time. And no, I mean, it's, I mean, I, first of all, I have to say thank you so much for the contributions and um, it's, it's really good to have them. Uh, and <laughs> I think you, you've very much helped get this underway yourself and Bala Krishna. Uh, I suppose the question on this call, and I see we've got a new entrant as well, Sukarn joined. Uh, you also have talking permission. You can unmute yourself and our chat is open. Um, yeah, so I, I guess our question would be with the small company, how much stuff should we take away versus how much should we keep? Um, and actually, I think that what's in there right now is looking pretty good. I don't think we should take away too many things. We definitely need all the steps for execution um, and we, all, we already do have a note that the documentation created should be as short as possible and as simple as possible, which is probably the key thing that might trip up a small company where it seems overwhelming to get this implemented. Um, I suppose the question I have for people on this call, and I'm just putting the small company document into the chat, is, is it light enough? I mean, it, to me, it looks like we're relatively minimal there, but 
from your experience, do you think we might still be putting small companies under too much pressure? Might people fall over on trying to do this? I don't have an opinion on that. I, as I said on the main list earlier, I don't really have experience with operating in small companies. So I was guessing for quite a bit in what I put in here. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Ah, Lufuno had an interesting comment suggesting that we add uh, links to templates and other resources. So I suppose, I mean, that's an interesting point. Um, for, for example, uh, we talk about here, let's say, having a written open source policy. And maybe inside this document, we should explicitly make reference to, for instance, our policy document that we've got in our reference library, and maybe include a minimal policy in appendices as an example. Um, do you, do you think that would work as long as we put it into an appendices so it doesn't look like main body text, doesn't look like, oh, this playbook is huge. Seems like a good idea to me. Yeah, I'll just put a note here. Um, examples into the appendix section. Um, maybe we can try to catch anywhere it's vague, like in the execution, executing the plan, uh, we say identify other key figures who need to be involved. Maybe we can add an example, such as people from legal uh, procurement or sales. Do you think that will be helpful or confusing? Um, the, this this is something that I guess would be the question of are we are we pushing people to think this is harder than it should be or are we helping them think oh yeah okay so this is the type of person I should talk with I'll just leave that open ended uh, I'll just put a note here is this useful. Um, so, step three. Oh, Lufuna has another comment. Uh, a point that small businesses are more than just resellers. Uh, okay. The point that small companies might have teams where people have multiple roles, uh, and you know they might have limited time, skill set, or other resources to meet the open chain requirements. And, and, and that's, that's a good point. So Lufuna suggested that can be in the challenge area. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna put here, we have limited staff. This is just the first run at the language. It won't necessarily stick. I'm just putting this in. Um, as a way to guide this. So uh, this addition is a suggested way of potentially addressing the small company thing. Okay, that's not a hard thing to do. Um, we can change the language, we can change the stress, the focus, but I just wanted to put that in. So if we're gonna suggest in terms of policies and key structures, uh, there should be a reference to the handbook or other documentation. Okay, so 
I'm going to add something here for the first time we mentioned policies, processes, and training. Add definition and link to the example. So I'm going to just put this into those three items. Uh, we may want to do that so that as people read that the very first time they encounter it, they realize, oh, there's, there's resources there to help us. Okay. Um, the next item is, I think, good. So we, we have a note under the resources available that there's no document processes now, no in-house legal staff, which is good. Um, and while there is outside legal, there's no open source compliance yet. Lavuno, your hand is up. Um, anything you want to say, you are most welcome to jump in. You're unmuted, but for some reason, there's no audio coming through. Me now. Ah, wonderful. We can hear you now. Okay. Is it fine now? Yeah. Uh, okay. I was saying that the, the last point that I was about to type is that uh, on the collaboration support side, if it's possible to have some sort of a mentorship slash coaching slash skills transfer for the small businesses. So yeah, we can be able to do stuff on our own. It's a really good point. Yeah. I wonder when it comes to mentorship, should we should we suggest pretty early on that people can get industry mentorship through communities like OpenChain? Um, perhaps even under planning our strategy, we see that people are talking about using OpenChain to guide strategy um, and make use of OpenChain development. Uh, maybe here we should immediately add under this section, um, make use of community. This is just an example, uh, but I think that might be a good way to insert the mentorship thing. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. So far, these additions all look super helpful to me. <laughs> um, okay. On step three, there was something I wanted to touch with. Um, this is about policies and processes. Now, I just wanted to double check up here a bit. Okay. The company has no formal documented processes. So step two, creating a policy will be the first formal policy. Step three, it seems that there will be no formal written processes. So maybe we could change it to focusing on, compare the difference between the written policy and the existing methods or processes used inside the company. What do you think? What I was thinking here when I added this, bit was that my assumption was a smaller company would be less likely to have written policies because everybody already knows what they're doing and they all work very closely together. Right. So my suggestion in step two was that each of the people involved in this activity would separately write down what they thought the policies and processes would be. And then they compared uh -huh. and find out whether they have different views on what the company actually does. That's a great point. So evidently, I didn't write that clearly enough. <laughs> Well, this is why we're here. We keep begging. Yep. Um, okay, so maybe we change it, suggest a change. Uh, compare the written policy with. Sure. 
can I come it? in? Sure, Please go do. ahead. Thank you. Uh, on that point, I believe I have highlighted it on my notes because policy development is a skill on its own. That's point number one. So having everybody go and do their own thing and come together, I was not so sure if that was effective. Um, maybe if we are working together as a team, it will be easier, particularly if we are a, a small business without necessarily the resources to hire a policy developer. So I think it will save us more time to just sit in one room and contribute to that document, which is why I was asking for templates, because if we have the templates, it's easier for us to collaborate in one room, even if it's just the two of us. But going on our own and then coming back, it's, it's not going to be effective for us as small businesses. That's such a good point. And of course, when we originally had the separate teams doing stuff, we sort of expected the teams to have their own um, path. But if it's a very small company, maybe these people are at desks beside each other. <laughs> so just a suggestion here, um, maybe we could change that. Uh, just maybe the members, members of the virtual OSPO uh, co-write or co-develop written open source policy and suggested process based on their understanding of the company's operation. And then compare the written policy with the unwritten processes currently used. Uh, suggested processes. We, okay. We're supposed to have, I saw something on the document. I'm, I'm just not, it might take me time to get to go there. But there is that process that is at the end where we do self-evaluation, I guess that's what it is. So I think with those results, they, those results are the ones that are supposed to. That's a good point. That's a good point. Maybe we can adjust the language, um, co-develop a written open source policy based on their understanding of the company's operation and suggested processes based self-certification um, spelled. And it's in the appendix three uh, down here, right? Yeah, I think so. It is, but, but at the moment that what you're doing there is converting steps two, three, and four all into step two. Ah, yes, you're right. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why it's broken down is to make it easier for somebody who uh, hasn't gone through this kind of thing before. Yeah. Okay. Step four should be the um, open chain self certification. Right. right. Just pulling this back a bit. Company's operation compared to written policy with the current one. Okay, uh, I think that might address it. What do you think, Stephen? Uh, let me read. Sorry, I was temporarily distracted by something else. <laughs> no problem. So at the moment, I think steps two is making step three redundant. Okay. Or at least uh, part of it, because what I'd, I I had deliberately separated two and three of, in order to get different viewpoints from within the company on what the processes were, and then in step two, and then step three was comparing them and creating a combined policy based on what the company did. Now, it depends on whether at, at step three, uh, you are trying to express what the company does 
or trying to express what you think the company should do. And I wasn't sure whether doing the latter was useful if step four is then go check open chain and discover where you've got your gaps. That's a very good point. A very good point. So um, in that case, let's say in step two, we're asking people to go away and co-develop and, and develop policies, and then they come back and compare with what they've got. So maybe we do need to keep that separate. How about we explicitly call out, because our virtual OSPO um, is two people, engineering and management. And we could say our task with So we, we task them to develop written open source policy. Then um, we ask them to compare the policies in step three. Yeah, combine the different expressions. Okay. Yeah, I mean, maybe it makes sense in step two to highlight we the, the point of step two is to get the separate understandings. Yeah. Um, Got a good. Okay, so um, step. Actually, this touches on something. Maybe each step we should in include a goal of the step. What do you think to help set context for people? Uh, could do. Uh, I, one of the things I noticed on these documents is that several of the steps are quite overloaded, so they might have multiple goals. That's a good point. And we, you know what we might find useful here is that if a step is overloaded, um, <laughs> we probably need to split it open, right? We should be able to describe each step as a single goal. Let me just put a note on that. All right, so I just put a note there about this. Uh, a very good point that OSPO is not defined in this document. Let me just try to find our first use of OSPO. Uh, let's put that into find and replace. All right, OSPO's first mentioned under step one. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that in not only there explicitly, but I'm going to get a definition of an OSPO uh, to put into this document and, and make sure that we have that right there. I'll just say add definition. You could link to the to-do group. Yes, that's my plan. Uh, they have a nice thing on GitHub with their definition of an OSPO, which I think might be useful. Uh, let's pull that up. actually talking with Anna, Anna about this the other day. <laughs> so, okay, so here it is, the open source program office. Bang. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just putting this in now as our definition. So we now have the to-do group definition included in the document. Good catch. marking that as result. Perhaps throughout this document where we bring up, bring up a term, we should always define it moving forward. Hmm. Stephen, you made such a good point. Uh, Lefano just uh, echoes that we should include references uh, to definitions and other documentation throughout. Concur, absolutely. 
I guess that should be the next big step on this document. Um, Stephen, you made such a good point that some of the steps are a little bit uh, compressed. They contain quite a bit of information. So I guess one note is we shouldn't hesitate to expand the steps as we go. Right. Yeah, uh, I, I just saw, for instance, step five might actually be a couple of steps. You know, your new policy and processes, your adoption plan with a timeline, and then socialization. Here's, here's a question, a general question. Um, if we have extra steps, how many steps is going to make people feel overwhelmed? What's, you know, what's the kind of number? Uh, right now we've got five or six steps, which already sounds like a lot of steps to me, but that said, uh, if we want to make things super clear, we might need to have more. Um, and I just wanted to check what's overwhelming. Uh, Lufan, you put your hand up. Um, sorry, I just gave you permission to talk. My apologies. Your permission was damaged when you re-entered. You are unmuted, but we don't have audio right now. Uh, we still don't have audio, I'm afraid. Okay, the fan is going to type. Right. I'm just looking at the steps again. I'm very cognizant of what Stephen mentioned by, about how to make sure they're clear. And while a typing is in progress, in terms of number of steps, uh, I agree that we don't want to have too many steps to avoid it looking overwhelming. So it might be might make sense to have a short number of steps that are high level and then later on in the document expand those steps with more detail, which could break them down more. I don't know. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point indeed. And Lefano sort of echoed that. Uh, she thinks it's not so much a concern with the number of steps, just clear guidance. So I suppose what we've discovered is that we need better definitions and much more pointing at reference material in this document as we go. It seems that this is equally related. I mean, we've been focusing on the small company document, but I think everything we're doing here relates to the other two documents getting better as well. So I think this is tremendously useful. We're actually just starting with the most resource constrained company <laughs> and working out. Um, okay. You know, looking at step two, if we have the members of the OSPO uh, develop different policies and then compare them in step three, uh, I'll just maybe improve the wording here. I'm just saying we compare them to understand perspectives and single. Uh, and then we have the written policy, compare the written policy with existing processes. Mm. Maybe we could say check if that written policy supports the processes currently used. Um, what do you think? If we said something like compare the written policy with the processes currently used and check if the processes need to be adjusted.
Uh, I'm just going to. Yeah, Lafano noted that the processes must be informed by the policy. Absolutely. Uh, the, the main change people might have is that they find that they all agree on a policy and then they double check their processes and they realize, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> what, we're, what we're actually doing with the processes, uh, it doesn't match our policy. So the processes need to be adjusted. The next sentence, if appropriate, get others in the company to review it. Um, I don't think we need that in this case. What do you think? Can we delete that? Well, my, my thinking here was that we've got a small group of people, just the senior engineer and the manager, describing what the company is doing. <laughs> and then maybe, maybe they're yeah. not uh, actually accurate. That's a, that's a very good point. It's a very good point indeed. You could end up with the two of them having a coffee and donut session and coming out and horrifying the rest of the staff. That's a, that's a good point. Gerald raises an interesting point. He's saying that, uh, have we considered developing a maturity assessment framework to use in step three? At this juncture, um, I don't believe we've considered doing that. But if you have a pointer to a simple maturity assessment framework that could be used, I think it'd be good for us to look at it. So CMMI. I, I would say no for that. <laughs> um, and the reason why I'd say no is because um, open chain is not directly related to the maturity of your processes for your software development. You could have be very mature or not at all. And whether you're compliant with open chain conformant to it is, is separate from that. And I wouldn't want to scare people off by thinking, giving them the impression that you should be trying to be CMMI compliant before getting open chain conformance. Just for I think, others on the call, yeah. I'm just pulling up that document so people can have a look at it. So just, uh, there were some images, I believe, down here, which showed some of it. Oh, no. Okay. So uh, this is maturity levels from incomplete, initial, managed, defined, quantitatively managed, and optimizing. So there's, it's quite a big thing to help people do the process management. And to Steve's point, uh, we are in a situation where we don't tend to judge the process content. We judge the existence of a process inflection point. Uh, last point of step three, I think there's a need for community of practice or mentorship. Oh, ah. Right, Lefano is suggesting here that we potentially link into um, mentorship or similar. Um, I think Lefano, at, at step three right now, what we're trying to do is check internally in the company if this makes sense. Mm -hmm. But this point, where you're suggesting people might need to get a reality check or anchor themselves. I believe it's where they combine things into a single written policy. Uh, so this is where we might need to make sure sample or get help, right? So this is where they might need to get industry best practice. Uh, Lafona has a question about what we're doing here. Um, she thought it was a question and answer process. The open chain self certification questionnaire is a Q&A process. Um, so definitely that is the Q&A process, but a lot of the stuff people will be doing internally uh, will be based on essentially their opinion and checking their colleagues' opinions. So it doesn't directly reflect on the Q&A for us. I just wanted to make one suggestion uh, on step three. 
Uh, Stephen's catch for making sure people check what the rest of the company thinks. Maybe we should make that very explicit. Uh, and instead of um, saying if appropriate, um, just say ensure other stakeholders in the companies uh, can review the policy and processes. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Lofano is making note that she thought it was a quality and insurance assurance process. Um, what specifically is a quality and assurance process? You know that uh, this this sentence. Maybe we can change it and say that ensure other stakeholders in the company agree with the direction, so that it's not linked to just um, proposed policy and processes, but the overarching direction the team is going with. What do you think? Maybe it depends whether step two and three are about describing what the company currently does or what the company is aiming to do. And I suppose you could do it either way. Yeah, um, my read on step two and three is that they're uh, taking us to where the company should be going uh, based on having some opinions and then looking at existing processes. But that's only my take. Uh, you know, what, what's your take on these steps? Well, wh when I drafted them out, my, my interpretation was, or my intent was establish current practice and then improve by comparison with open chain. Yeah. Because that's uh, the strategy described earlier. Okay. Yep. Okay. So step two, based on current operation. Step three. Yep. Okay. But it, but it could equally be, you know, aspirational. I think it is. It's fine to say that this is, you know, steps two and three are putting putting together what you believe you need to do in order to be conformant. And then you go and check in step four and make sure you've got everything. Right. Yep. Uh, good point. Okay. Uh, my only suggestion then is that we just take, ensure other stakeholders in the company agree with the proposal. Okay. Uh, Lofano points out that policy is a, a consultative process, so other people should and must be consulted. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Good, good follow-up question though. Should it be by consensus? Uh, my perspective would be that companies are not a democracy, so it should take input, but there should definitely be decision makers uh, to, to make a call. But yeah. you know, that's one perspective. Agreed. And I mean, that's what the uh, senior management and senior engineer are supposed to be doing in this context. But the reason for getting the review with the other parts of the company is to make sure that they haven't missed out these whole gaps that engineering are doing in their normal day-to-day -day stuff that are very relevant to this particular topic, but not immediately visible to the senior people in the company. Yeah. Okay. And Lefano just suggests that we should make sure it's clarified. Uh, uh, yes. 
we should make sure that it isn't misinterpreted as needing consensus, but rather just understanding. Okay, how about when it comes to this other stakeholders, um, we don't put them as a blocker to agree. Uh, we instead say something along the lines of ensure that this proposal reflects current business operations. What do you think? Sure. So this removes the confusion or potential confusion um, over who has to agree. But by putting the term that it should reflect current business operations, it would seem to inherently require consultation with the rest of the company to make sure. Or maybe say ensure any proposed. Okay, because what's actually happening out in our particular conversation is reflecting the difference between my original intent, which was uh, what company currently does and the possible, possible alternative, which is the aspirational, what the company wants to do. Because uh, Lufano, you're saying that there needs to be clear stakeholders and it's not by consensus and so on. And that's true for a policy that you're coming up with what you plan to do, but that's not true of what you currently do. What you do is reality, those are facts. That's not a consensus, it's just what you is actually going on right now. So one of them would require um, a clear decision maker as to where your direction is and what you're going to do. Whereas the other one is just gathering information about your current situation. Just looking at, at the document right now. Uh, uh, Lafana is making note that policy development should be sure to cover all functional requirements. So maybe it comes right back to step two, the beginning of where we had members of the virtual OSPO ind independently develop written open source policies. Maybe we should say members of the virtual OSPO and other stakeholders. And that means that other people in the company with a stake in this should develop the documentation that's later chewed on to make one policy. That's uh, right here. Okay. That would allow us to remove this sentence under step three. And step four, I think works well. It's just compare with the self-certification questionnaire and identify gaps. And then step five is implementation of the new stuff. Uh, yeah. If I remember correctly, step five was unchanged from the median company and step four probably should be basically the same as the median company one. I think I was just typing from memory. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think, I think, uh, I think it's looking pretty good now. So we're forming our OSPO. We're getting the OSPO and other stakeholders to write down what they think the company policy is based on how the company actually works. And then step three is to combine that set of ideas into a single policy. Double check if that single policy seems to reflect what's actually happening. Uh, compare step four, compare against the self-certification questionnaire and identify gaps. And step five, uh, go fix the gaps. Make sure that you've got a timeline and people are responsible. 
and make sure your company knows what you're doing. That takes us to step six, uh, which is all about implementation, et cetera, et cetera. I think that, I think that workflow goes. Uh, Lofano is asking a question. Are we going with different policies on step two and three? Um, what we're currently going with on step two and three is that in step two, people write down what they think they're ha what they think should happen and what is happening in the company. What's the policy in operation today? And people write down what they, they think that is uh, in step two. And on step three, they compare notes to see if they all thought the same thing or if some people have completely different perspectives of <laughs> what type of policy covers the company's operation. And in step three, they combine their notes into one policy. So it's a two-part two thing. Step one, check your independent understanding of how the company's operating. Step three, compare notes with your peers and make a combined understanding. Alrighty. Now we've had a, a ton of stuff done today. So what I suggest is that we wrap it up here. Uh, we take this recording. Uh, ah, before we wrap up, Lefano has a suggestion, uh, which, which was mentioned earlier. And Lefano, I think you might've left the call during the bit which we came back to this. Lefano was suggesting in step two, that people collaboratively develop the open source policy. Now, Stephen, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, but you suggested that the, the useful thing might be for people to write down their own thoughts fully first so they could compare and contrast uh, before they do the collaborative uh, combination. Would that be correct? Yes, indeed. So uh, again, Levano is talking about drafting a policy for the future, what you're going to do going forward. Whereas I'm talking about discovery of what you're currently doing before you make any changes. So step two is really a discovery process that leads into step three, a consolidation process. Uh, step four is where you really start to think about uh, how, how this discovery refers to the ISO standard. And then step five is where you finalize a new policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and part of the reason for doing this is because I'm assuming that a smaller company will have far less in the way of processes written down, far less in the way of process experience, simply because they haven't needed to, because they all work with each other and know what's going on. So they're less likely to have experience in creating processes, and therefore I'm, I don't want to overload them with something complicated, just here's a simple way to figure out what you're doing, what you want to do, where you need to change. Lefano asked if we could change step two to reflect that it's a discovery process. Um, Sounds perfect so the, to me. Oh, um, Lefano. Better way of expiring it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, Lefano, I, I just added in the goal uh, to make reference uh, that it's a discovery uh, of current perspectives. Okay, now because we've covered quite a bit here, uh, what I suggest we do is we wrap it up here, we take these outcomes and recordings to the wider group and we solicit their feedback for next steps. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress and we'll probably need to fold this progress into the medium and large company material as well. So I'll take an action item to work on folding that. Uh, with the proviso that first I'll give our broader community a couple of days to comment on the outcomes from this call. Does, does that work for everyone? If you have any objections, just let me know. Sounds good to me. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, Lefano, Stephen, thank you so much. Gerald, it was great to have you on board for the first time. Um, and Sukarn as well, thank you for catching the definitions issue. I look forward to talking with you all shortly and let's see what the rest of the community makes of our progress so far. Have a wonderful day, everyone.
Thank you. Take care.